Hi, my name is Oliver, and in this video I'll be teaching you how to create a fake 3D glow in After Effects. So first of all, I have illustrated a few things that we're going to use for this tutorial. Now the first thing is just this map. It's a simple flat 2D map, and we're essentially going to take this and sort of wrap it around a sphere, so it becomes this globe. Now you can go ahead and find some free stock vector of a map. You can try and, and trace a world map or just use a world map if you'd like. Just make sure that you have the right permissions to use that image or illustration. Now it doesn't really matter whether the map is with a transparent background or with a background because we're actually going to add that in a bit. Now the only reason I've actually made this circle is just so we can sort of get a sense of how big we want it to be because we're actually not going to use that. And also I have made the shadow on top, it's just set to multiply. And also I sort of made the circle so I could see the scale of, of this shadow so we can match it up. But what we're actually going to do is create a background. So we'll go to layer, new, solid, and we'll just call this the background. And we just use the eyedropper tool and select this blue color. Click OK and just drag it underneath the map. So right now you can see that we don't have that circle anymore. It's only defined by the shadow. But we're actually going to take the map and the background, right click it and pre-compose. So we'll just call this map and we'll go straight into it. So as you can see, we have the map in the center and there's a lot of, if you'd call it water around it. And we actually want to change that. So we need to get the aspect ratio right, otherwise it will sort of stretch out the, the map and we don't really want that. So you can actually do this if you go down here and you select the region of interest. And you can sort of drag a rectangle around the map to make it fit. So sort of like this. And just try to make a snug fit best you can sort of like this, and we go to composition, and then we select the crop come to region of interest. So right now you can see that it's perfectly cropped, and the thing is that if we add too much, you can see water on the side, then it would stretch it out that way, or add too much water on the top, it will sort of squash it together. So we need to, to make it a snug fit. Now we can go back to the main composition, and right now you can see that it doesn't really fill out the entire thing, that doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is actually go to effects and presets, and then we'll search for CC sphere. Just take this effect and drag it onto the map. And right now you can see that it actually wraps it around a sphere. It's, it's a bit too small, and we don't really want this realistic shading because we work with sort of more of a 2D style. But we can just go to the CC sphere and go ahead and change some settings. So right now, the reason why we have this circle is so we can actually line it up and get this shadow. So if we just zoom in, we can try and drag up the radius so it fits. And we just have to make this approximately that size. You can really zoom in if you want to and just try and get it perfect. Sort of like this, should be fine. Zoom out again. And now we want to remove the shading. Now you might want this shading if that's the look you're going for, but in my case we're going for the 2D look. So we'll go under shading, and what's really creating this is sort of the diffuse and the specular. The specular is this sort of shine reflection here, so if we take that down to zero, you see that's removed. And then we can take the diffuse to zero as well. And now you can see that actually removes almost all of the lighting, and that's because the ambient light isn't turned up and we want the ambient to be 100 because that will just maintain the, the same colors that we picked at first. Set that to 100 and we have the same colors. Now we might want to turn up the quality to full. As you can see it's a bit sharper. But you, you might see that it's not that sharp and the reasoning behind this is that we actually turned up the radius quite a bit and the map itself, at least the composition, isn't that high res. If we go into the composition settings, you can see that it's it's not that big of a resolution because you have to imagine that our main composition is 1920 by 1080. So if we take this map and scale it up, it will start to get blurry. 
Now you can easily fix this. You just have to make sure that you're locking the aspect ratio and then you can, can drag these values out. So you make sure that you have enough quality. Click OK. And we just have to scale the map and the background. Now we have to make sure that we're scaling this from the center. For this, we can actually take the, the map and pair it to the background. So we're scaling them together. But first of all, we have to make sure that the background is properly centered. So we'll open up this title and action save. And you can see that it has to be in the center like this. And then we can zoom out again, turn the title action save off and parent the map to the background and essentially scale it up so we get this snug fit again right around here. Then we go to the main composition. And as you can see, the quality is already much better, much sharper. So that's what we're looking for. And now before we start animating anything, we, we might want to get a different scale of the sort of map. So you can see right now it's maybe a bit too big or a bit too small. That's really all up to your preference. But the thing is that if we, we have cropped this properly, we can actually just take the map and we have to make sure that, that this is centered the anchor point. So we'll go into the tile action save again. And of course, select the pan behind tool and drag that into the center so it's scaled properly. And here you can take the map and if you make it a bit smaller, so you have a bit of water all around, you can see that it scales down. So you might prefer this look and you can go for that. So now if we want to animate the map, we want to animate some rotation. You don't have to turn on the 3D for the map or anything like that. Controls are all under the CC sphere and you just have to go under rotation. So you can see we have the X, Y and C and the X is sort of up and down. The Y is to the sides, so horizontal. And the Z is sort of the standard rotation, you could say, if it wasn't 3D. And, and the ones that I usually tend to animate the most is the X and Y rotation. So mostly the y, y rotation and a bit of X. Now you have to make sure that you get this from a proper angle because when you scale the map down to so see a bit more, there's also going to be a lot of water here. So this angle isn't that attractive in, in an animation, in a scene. So you always sort of have to make sure that, that you get an attractive angle of the earth. Uh, you could use this, but, but again, this, this seems scuffed. So, so we don't really want this. Now we can just do some simple animation. Maybe we can make the, the earth scale up as it's rotating. And to do that, we actually have to, well, first of all, we can go ahead and delete the circle. That doesn't really do anything. It's just a placeholder. We can take the shadow and parent it to the map. And, and then we can take the map and do some scale animation. So add a keyframe for the scale. Maybe we want it to be a bit smaller. And for a few seconds, just increase in scale. So as you can see, quite simple, but maybe we actually want it to ease a bit. So we can select the keyframes and we can press F9 to ease it. So perhaps we want it to scale up quickly from the start and then ease out like this. So you can see it sort of pops up and then eases slowly. So we can exaggerate that a bit if we'd like. And also if we want the animation to stop here around 2 seconds and 22 frames, we can just press N to sort of crop the work area. And now we want to add some rotation. So we can do the same easing sort of for the rotation. And we want to add a keyframe for the X and Y rotation. And let's just first of all find the most attractive angle. And this is what we're going to end up at. So if we zoom in, this angle is quite good. Maybe we want a bit more around here, a bit up. So we have some water, but also a lot of land, which is really what we want. So we can add the X and Y rotation and just press U to see all keyframes. So this is the keyframe we want to end up at. So we can just take these rotation keyframes. And then we have to decide which way we want the earth to rotate. So we can just see that we probably have, we probably have the most land over here. So 
maybe go over here and we can rotate it up a bit. So this is not the most attractive angle, but we won't really be at this position for that long. So we just select the keyframes and press F9 to ease them. And we can sort of try and match the easing. So let's just start with the Y rotation. Now, if you have this uh, no selected properties have expressions and it takes up too much of your space, you just go into these settings and turn off the show expression editor. Now we can select the first keyframe, make it fast at the start, then deaccelerate into this ease and do the same for the X rotation. So it's the same easing, pretty simple. And try and zoom out and just see what we have got so far. So you can see that we have this simple animation, but it looks quite nice. And if you want the globe to keep on rotating, you can actually do this without having to add any keyframes and adjust the easing and all of that. You can just sort of go to the rotations and we can see that if we look at the first rotation, that's positive because it goes from a lower negative value up to the positive values. And the second one is a negative one. So let's start with the first one, the positive one. We just Alt or Option click on Mac. And we just sort of keep the text here. And then we go plus time. And then we go times. And because this one is positive, we just type in sort of a value could be around five maybe. And then for the next one, which is negative, we do the same thing, but we just go plus time times and then maybe negative five so these values have to be adjusted but but this is just some placeholder so you can see what's going on so right now you should be able to see that the globe keeps on rotating now maybe we don't want it to rotate that much in the x direction because it's mostly the horizontal we want so this could maybe be times two and this could maybe be a bit more so times minus seven perhaps let's try and see how this looks and that way you can get a continuous sort of rotation animation on the globe. And pretty quickly you have created a fake 3D globe animation in After Effects. Didn't take a lot of time and you can go ahead and tweak it as you'd like. You can add some lighting as you saw before, maybe add some effects. I sort of really like this simple 2D style, so this is just what I'm going for. But I, I surely hope that you learned something from this tutorial and that you perhaps can use this in some of your projects if you have to create a globe. I recently did it for one of my client projects and really this method is just very quickly and very simple to, to get the results that you're looking for. So that's all for this video, be sure to like if you enjoyed it, leave a comment down below, tell me if you can use this for any of your future projects, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for new tutorials. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.